congratulate the members of the Church Committee Secretariat. This is an astounding success, and this is nothing but good for the university. As, as Attorney Jewel said earlier, this is the first time that we're doing it. And whatever the result of this process might be, I think we're all winners. Okay, so my task is to give you my presentation on my goals, mission, and vision for the University of Makati. And I titled it as the University of Makati in the 21st Century, a five-piece strategic framework and plan of action. Next slide, please. Let me begin by uh, directing your attention to the fact that context matters. I say this because I think it's important that we are looking at the same page. We know that there are particular issues that we are confronting, that we are facing, and I'd like to go over some of them before proceeding to the meat of my presentation. This phrase, a time of grave happenings and urgent problems, was enunciated in the 1960s when young scholars in the field of public administration decided to gather together for the sake of questioning the state of their discipline. It was a description of the heavy days of the 1960s, which I think resonates with what we're doing right now, reeling as we are just reeling from the effects of the pandemic and the economic turmoil that results after it. We're also looking at this age of dramatic advances in technology, which we're all familiar with, the fourth industrial revolution, as we navigate this world characterized by volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So this trifecta of considerations, in fact, set the tone for what we're going to do in the next few years. Next slide, please. So I present, I prepared the goal, which encapsulates, I think, what I want to achieve in the next four years and even beyond. It's quite a mouthful, so I suppose instead of reading to you the content of, of the goal, I'd like to unpack it and we go to the next slide. The goal embodied in the mission um, is composed of the following. Number one, we want to put UMAP in the map not only of the Philippines but of the entire world. We want to be recognized as a premier and local, globally recognized local university. We've been producing graduates that are professionally competent, but we want this to be formally recognized by whatever uh, institutions or recognitions that are, that are currently in place. And we want to be, we want to have more active partnership with the city government of Makati in terms of generating knowledge the business of knowledge creation, and coming up with products that have both local and global impact. And this we can do via sustainable innovations, broad-based research, we're going beyond the traditional confines of educational or even public administration research into more cutting edge and technology-driven areas of interest, through strong industry partnership, and going through a new phase of higher education presence in the Philippines, international collaboration. Next slide, please. So in order to do this, I am proposing a five-piece strategic framework. I decided to use this mnemonic device so that at the end of this exercise, we'd have some takeaway. I know that we're all familiar with four piece. I just added one more. So it's five piece. Can we go to the first? There's no debate that the first and most important asset of any organization is its human resources. So my proposal is that, what it actually means in practical terms, is that all the policies, programs, and action and plans of the university should be consciously informed of the fact that what is important for us is employee welfare. And I'm talking about the interest of the faculty members, the administrative staff, the students, in the greater community to which the university belongs. What this means in practical terms is coming up with a comprehensive, integrated, and holistic approach to career development, to employee development, both at the institutional and individual levels. We've looked at it essentially, primarily at the institutional level, but I think it's also important that we push the envelope and examine it down to the level of the individual. And of course, this also includes the perennial concerns of every faculty member, every employee in the university concerning promotion, upgrading of rank, and opportunities for training. Yet, 
I think it's also important for us to highlight that while we drive towards excellence, individually and collectively, we must also achieve a healthy sense of work-life balance. And we do this by intra-university, intra-university community involvement in the development of what the Japanese calls ba, or shared space. And uh, it is also incumbent for leaders of the university to be fostering a learning environment that takes into consideration specific targets such as inclusivity, gender sensitivity, multiple intelligences, and respect for diversity. Next. Uh, in the area of programs, we're very thankful to Chad that finally we've received our institutional recognition, albeit with some conditions which we've already complied with. What this means is that we can now push the envelope further and take on the task of developing and designing programs that the market needs. Okay, We have to engage with emerging technologies and I wouldn't even say that they're emerging because they're already in the midst of what we're doing. We have to talk about AI, we have to talk about the cyber economy, we have to talk about nanotechnology. And this should inform the kind of centerpiece academic thrust of each college in the institution. And given our unique position as the University of the City of Makati, we should also take a lead role in digitally transforming not only the university, but the community to which we belong. Next, prestige. This could easily be done by further improving our already impressive ratings in the board exams. We do know we're proud of our graduates. We've always been ahead of national government uh, passing rates, but there are some programs that, do, that still do need some assistance, and we're going to focus on that. Um, and in terms of prestige in the academic sense, universities are largely measured now by their outputs in research. And this is an area of focus that we have to put a lot of attention. How? By jump-starting faculty publication. We're already, there are already a lot, a lot of inroads in this area. But this is something that we have to do further on an accelerated pace. And I think also, again, going back to the unique character of UMAC, we must position ourselves as one of the leaders of the LUCs in the country and even engage other SUCs and private institutions in what in what the literature calls co-competition instead of competition. Next. Partnerships has been one of the um, important strategies of the university over the years. And we must continue doing this and making an additional dimension of internationalization. So international collaboration, opportunities for cooperation beyond the confines of the territorial boundaries of the country should also be an important policy agenda. The triple helix model of collaboration, I'm sure Julie will be happy with this, should consciously guide all of our activities. It talks about cooperation between and among the academy, the government, and the industry. So all of our programs should take this into heart. Next. Um, as perhaps some of you may know, I come from the field of public administration. And in public administration, we always ask the question, who is our public? And presence here talks about our public. And by our public, I refer not only to the public of the University of Makati, but the public of the city government of Makati. We are considered a department of the city government of Makati and must take that to heart. What it means is that all of us, all of the members of the community, from the faculty members, administrators, to the students, should be agents of positive change because of the enormous privilege, I say this again, of the enormous privilege of being a Makatizen. Just because we are a Makatizen already gives us some form of advantage over our contemporaries and colleagues. And uh, what it means in practical terms is that for faculty members, we must be ready to give technical advice. There are already examples of doing this. I'm so proud of the Department of Social Sciences of the College of Arts and Letters engaged in the cultural mapping of the city government of Pocatu. That's just one example of that we can focus on. And um, I also would like um, UMAC to be positioned, to position itself, not only as the research arm of the city, 
but also its impact. And this is especially important because the leadership of the city thrives on a kind of governance model that relies heavily on data and not that feeling. Okay, next. So uh, just a sort, some sort of a recap. This is the four piece plus one framework that I'm proposing, composed of people, programs, partnerships, prestige, and presence. Next slide. I say that, of course, the details would have to be supplied uh, in the future and would have to be done by a bigger group than only one that is done by a candidate for the presidency of the university. But I think there are certain guiding principles that must govern or inform, that must resonate in whatever strategy that we intend to do. And that is, for example, the idea that we have at our disposal the ability to look at different scenarios of the future. And it is, it is reckless for us not to look at these futures and perhaps even make a stake into not only predicting the future, but perhaps shaping it. We must be agents of creative destruction. I've always been a fan of, evolution, of an evolutionary approach to education in the tradition of Joseph Schumpeter. We look at destroying existing frameworks, those that are not relevant anymore for the purpose of ushering new ones, because it is only in doing so that we're going to be able to successfully create radical innovation. Um, from perfect to imperfect, that's not a typographical error. We, we, uh, econo economists would tell us that the market operates in a perfect environment. Talking about competition between, between and among commodity products, sugar, salt, etc. The real competition that we want to aspire for is one where we have a different value proposition than the rest of the world. In UMAC parlance, we call this the purple cow negative. But in economic terms, we must achieve, uh, 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 we must achieve dynamic, imperfect competition. And I'm sure we're all familiar with paradigm shifts in the tradition of Thomas Kuhn, but and we've been able to navigate through this myriad of different paradigm sh shifts over the years. But I think it's essential for us to confront the issue of mindsets. And that is something that we have personally, we have control over. Because all of the things that we talk about this morning will become utterly useless if we don't change. And so, in ending, it's like this, let me share with you a quotation which I think finds astounding resonance to this activity that we do today. As I said earlier, it doesn't matter who really comes out on top of this process, the fact that we're doing it is already a success for the university which we all have. And this is a quotation from Dame Shirley Pierce, and I quote, The university is not a finished product but a dynamic institution, constantly changing and adapting to new circumstances. Its role is not to preserve the past, but to shape the future by providing the knowledge, skills, and values that will enable individuals and societies to thrive in an increasingly complex and interconnected world. Thank you very much. Thank you.